to start with you, but I, I would like everybody else to weigh in um, if they feel that they would like to. A word that I heard you use is intentional, and I've heard Kim Davis use that, uh, and Haley referenced this in, in her speech. Um, in terms of not, not shying away from having dissenting voices weigh in, and in fact, leaning into that because you understand that those diverse perspectives are going to give you the most insight. Um, so you have to be intentional in hiring or picking or whatever it is that you're doing. At the same time, you said you're, you're challenging your commissioner to make sure that he made the right choice. So first of all, where's the balance between intention, being intentional um, but picking the right candidates, diversity, inclusion, and we're not, obviously we're not just talking about gender, we're talking about race, we're talking about age, we're talking about sexual orientation, we're talking about the whole spectrum, and then we can also move on to the sort of the importance of intersectional feminism, but that's big. But let's start with you, <laughs> Jessica. Um, so my, from my perspective, and considering there's a lot of students in the room and those who are learning about the diversity inclusion space, I like to describe diversity as getting an invitation to the party and inclusion having fun at the party. And both are equally important. So you have to look at both your hiring practices and then your business practices. How are you convening executives, decision makers to get to the right outcome? And I think what it requires, particularly with our, my generation, I'm 42, and I feel like my generation's the pivot generation, the intentionality is, from my perspective, a mindset. It's being conscious of when and how you're contributing and how you are processing other people's feedback. And I think it's very easy to sit around a room of what I call bobbleheads and- We're the bobbleheads? We are now. Yeah. Do you <laughs> want to agree with everything do, she says? Of people yes. who <laughs> you know, and a lot of this is subconscious and I should disclose my mom's a psychologist, so I, I'm very interested in kind of the psychology behind this and organizational psychology, I think it's very subconscious that people seek out perspectives of, of those who will affirm their point of view. That's very validating. That builds your confidence, that makes you feel good about yourself. And I don't think for anyone, including me, who, and I'm guilty of it as well, um, I, I don't think for anyone it was, it's intentional to be exclusive or to exclude anyone from a conversation, but it feels very comfortable. And I think for most of us, particularly in my generation and the generations before me, we were not really forced or challenged to put ourselves in those uncomfortable situations. And so that's the intentionality part. The intentionality is I'm going to make a choice to show up in a different way. I'm going to make a choice to put myself in an uncomfortable situation where I'm actually listening, I'm asking questions, I'm listening more than I'm speaking. I'm seeking someone's perspective who I know is going to disagree with what I think or feel, and I'm going to actually consider it. I'm going to force myself to pause and consider it. And I think other factors are at play here, not just how we were trained to seek affirming perspectives, but also the way business has evolved to seek immediate gratification. There's not a lot of space for the pause. Mm -hmm. And I think that hurts inclusion, frankly, because we're all being measured on how much, excuse my language, shit we get done in a day. Yeah. And is that quality or is that quantity? And I think a lot of systems need to be shifted in order to measure the quality so that we give ourselves permission to pause and be less focused on the quantity of shit we get done. Amen. Mm -hmm.